So, you want to take a regular length fork, make it into a little tiny short one for the purposes of making a rear seat support for a recumbent bicycle or some other random project you have sitting around in the basement that you never finished. First, pick a fork you like. This one in particular I think is really beautiful. I don't need to worry about the 100 millimeter axle length of the dropouts. I don't need to worry about the rake of the fork. I also don't need to worry about the standard length of the fork legs. So, I just picked one I really liked. I calculated the overall length, and the green marks are where I need to cut. I'll be cutting out and reattaching the dropouts, so when you're doing the calculations, don't forget to include the length of those dropouts. I chose to cut at 45 degrees because it'd probably look good and it's easy. Normally I attach the thing I'm cutting to a wooden jig, but in this case it turned out to be pretty easy to do by balancing it on three points at the top of the fourth crown. Please don't use an open blade like that, but a setup similar to this can yield some really good results. I use the blade a bit here to clean up the cut. Because of the geometry and the curve of the fork, I was going to have to pre-cut the other fork leg in order to be able to properly angle cut that second leg. I used an angle grinder with a metal blade for that cut and then followed it up with the angle cut here. Using the same blade, I cleaned it up and evened it up. There are many ways to shorten a fork. Here's one option I did not use. Using that really short fork end with the dropout on it, I could have inserted it, cleaned everything up, brazed or welded it on, and it probably would have looked pretty good, but I needed something a lot shorter. Next, I cut out the dropouts. When you're doing this, remember that that dropout extends a pretty good distance into the fork leg, so don't cut it off too short. You will need that to insert into your new fork leg. Now we can mock it up. Take a regular axle and brace the two dropouts so that they won't move with respect to each other. Make sure they're perfectly parallel. Then you can insert them into the two new fork legs and figure out exactly where you want it. I did spend a bunch of time cleaning up and shaping the dropouts. Plus I removed those eyelets since I figured they wouldn't be needed for my purposes. Looks pretty good. So next is the cleanup. Take a Dremel with a drum sander attachment on it. Clean the inside and the outside of those joints. Next I jam the dropouts into the fork blades, position them where I wanted them, and use some duct tape as a jig. Yes, duct tape is flammable. Something better than duct tape is preferable, but I knew it wasn't going to move much. So on the first leg, I heated it up and then melted some flux into it. Then went to the other fork leg, heated that thing up, melted some flux into it, and then started brazing. Did a little spot braze on the left-hand fork that you see there, and then went back to the right-hand fork, which is already partially heated, and finished up a spot braze on that one. Welding works too, I just haven't done much of it yet. Once it was tacked in place, I let it cool down for a while, rechecked all the measurements, made sure it was nice and straight, went back and finished up the joints. And this is what it looks like. To fill those holes, I needed something. So, took a little tiny skinny piece of metal, shaped it, formed it a little bit bigger than the hole because I was going to cut it off later, and brazed it all in. So that's what it looks like after the brazing has been done with the end caps. Remember, this is the fork I started with, and this is the fork I ended with. It's significantly shorter, I think about 7 inches shorter, 
and it actually, I'm, I'm quite pleased. I spent a bunch of time cleaning up the outside, so the transition is nice and, nice and smooth, and it looks a whole lot better than anything else I've ever done. Now this fork is for a recumbent bicycle project and it will not attach to a wheel. It's for the rear upper seat brace. So this technique would work if you had a longer fork and did not have to shorten it as much. You need to make sure that the dropout distance, the inside to inside dropout distance is 100 millimeters, which is the standard dropout distance for front wheels. Rear wheels vary depending on the wheel, but you see that this one, that's the 100 millimeters. And the actual distance we have from inside to inside is 85 millimeters. This technique moves the dropouts from the center of the fork legs to the outside edge of the fork legs. So if you're not shortening it too much, you could probably fit a standard wheel without much stretching. And here, in my basement, is the five-year project I really need to finish. That fork, which is now the upper seat brace, is attached on the top end with a standard stem and will be attached on the bottom end with an axle. You'll see it on the road soon.